what work has to be performed to make a hoop out of a steel band of length L with H and thickness delta. Now there might be confusion from which side we have to bend it. So let me write it here that hoop is made by bending the length. So width remains the same. So it's going to be a cylinder with the circumference of the cylinder will be length and height of the cylinder will be width. And thickness of that uh, cylindrical shell that will be same as delta. So we have to bend a sheet to make a hoop. So let's take an analogy first. So we have let's say three springs and we have to four to make a hoop out of these three springs. So you can imagine that when we are going to turn them around and join them. So the inside is spring, the blue colored spring that will be compressed. The medium one will be of same length and the outer one will be stretched. So we have already seen the analogy of uh, a spring and these elastic rods. So that's what is going to happen here also. So let's say this is our elastic rod with thickness delta length L and we have to rotate it like this fold it like this so it becomes a circumference of L length and obviously it's a 3D figure so the height H is inside the plane. So now you can we can break it into two parts so this is the center line just like this yellow line then there is a top part and the bottom part. So now if we turn it so it's going to look like something like this so you can already see that the length of each of the three parts is different and just like here already at this stage the outer portion has expanded a bit the inner portion has compressed a bit and the middle portion is of the same length and because there is already some compression and extension already some work has been done so when you complete the loop so you can imagine there will be there's going to be a lot of compression here and there's going to be a lot of expansion here. And again, the middle part of this rod is going to be of same length. So that's what we have written. When hoop is further completed, middle line remains of the same length. Outer region will stretch further and inner region will compress further. So this is what's going on. And now let's do the calculations. And yeah, see this part, there is compression, this part, there is expansion. But our formula is half y into sprain square. So sprain square is positive here and sprain square is positive here also. So here also to, to stretch it, we have to do some work and here to compress it also, we have to do some work. So let's find what that work is so we'll take a small element why because the strain is different in different parts of the rod in fact you can see that on the top part it is elongation and in bottom part it is compression and in elongation also you can see that as you move further away from the middle line the strain is going to be more and more so different amount of energy per unit volume is is stored as you go up and down from the middle path so that's why we are going to take one element and we'll find what is the elastic energy stored in that element and then we'll differentiate that to get the total energy stored in the loop. And whatever that energy stored is, how did that come about? It come about because of the external work done. So we need to find external work so that is equal to energy stored. So we have taken this ring and let's write the formula of uh, energy stored for this ring alone. So du by dv is equal to y strain square by two, our standard formula. So this is the du stored in a cylindrical shell of dx thickness. So yeah, of course it's not a ring, it's a cylindrical shell because it's going inside the plane also. And I've just drawn a part of it. So if I draw the circle, it will become quite a, it would be complicated. So 
yeah, this of course is a full circle and it's going inside the plane. So it's a cylindrical shell and we are finding the energy stored in that. So du by dv is equal to y strain square by 2. So we need du because we need the energy, total energy stored. So du will be y by 2 in delta L by L whole square into dv. So dv for the cylindrical shell will be 2 pi into r plus x. So yeah, here x we have taken from the middle point. So you will see later why. So that will be the volume will be the area of this ring times h. So area of the ring will be 2 pi r plus x dx into h. So what is delta L? So original length was 2 pi r, which we know is L, but now it is the radius is increased by x amount. So the new length will be 2 pi r plus x minus 2 pi r, the original length, divided by original length, that, that is L, whole square. So you can say 2 pi r, 2 pi r will get cancelled and we'll get a relation between u and x. So now we have got this relation, so we can integrate this. So value of x will vary from minus delta by 2 to plus delta by 2. So we do that and now we can because r 2 pi r is equal to l and we don't know r but we have to find the answer in terms of l so now you can replace r with l so r will be l by 2 pi so we do that put the limits and we get our answer pi square y h delta cube by 6 l so now you can see that the advantage when we take the when we take the x from the middle position because that's why when we do minus delta by 2 to plus delta by 2 this term becomes 0 so if you take x from the center for example the calculation will be slightly more difficult but still you will get the answer all right